for taking the time to uh, sit down with us. Well, maybe she's standing. We don't know. I'm standing is a better. <laughs> Sally, you are the absolute best. Uh, I'm shaking right now. I'm so excited to be talking to you. Thank you so much. Uh, both Thank Jenna you. and I grew up with your show. We're going to talk about much more than that, but we can't start without acknowledging your iconic, groundbreaking talk show. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, please, I've talked about this for the past 20 years. <laughs> I just, before we even get started, I just want to thank you on behalf of our generation because, Sally, you kept us company every day that we were sick from home or sick from school at home. You always kept us entertained, made us feel just a little bit better. And uh, so I think everyone from our generation would like to really thank you for that. Well, isn't that great? I really thank you very much. That's very sweet of you. Now, let's talk about what you're doing these days. I know you've got a brand new show. I'm a huge fan. It's on YouTube called Sally Jesse Rides. And that's no, where... No, 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 What? You don't want to talk about Sally Jesse Rides? Oh, I don't mind talking about it, hon. Here's what it was. It was a pilot, and nobody bought it. Nobody cared. Oh, I cared. It about... Well, that's one listener or viewer. We did it about four or five years ago now, I think. And um, actually, since uh, I was fired by NBC Universal, I probably have made about two, gosh, seven pilots. Whoa. And uh, so I've all, none of them sold, not one. Uh, not one offer of a job. So what I did was I put all these pilots in the back of my head, uh, but it isn't a show and it isn't on currently, and uh, nobody cares is the answer. Well, maybe they will after hearing this. I love, I love doing it because I love her. Who's her? Oh, Jinx Monsoon. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Exactly. You're also a big fan of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes, of course. Yes, definitely. Uh, I like that you're very open uh, you and know, honest I, about nobody picking up the show because even a huge star like you, Sally, uh, it's good for people to know out there that, you know, it's not all roses even if you're successful. Oh, my dear. You know what's funny? You do little uh, interviews and things, and you get checked. From uh, because they're union. I'm a union person, obviously. So um, the other day, I went in and made the deposit at the bank. And the bank looked up, the guy looked up, and he saw me, and he recognized the name. And he said, you're Sally Jesse Raphael. I said, yes. He said, here's a Warner Brothers check for 69 cents. Here's <laughs> a Disney check. For a dollar and three. Here's a check from um, uh, something about the devil. I don't even remember what it was. And it was 34 cents. So the whole thing came to under $20. Oh, and he geez. said, I hope you don't have to live on this. <laughs> and I said, no. Salt in the wound, buddy. That's the, no, that's the kind of funny things that people... The other funny thing that people don't get is um, every once in a while, I'll be pushing a, a cart in my supermarket, which is uh, at the end of the hill where I live, called Hannaford's, and I'll be pushing the cart, and somebody will stop me, and they'll say, Sally, and I'll go, yeah, and they go, what are you doing here? And I go, well, I needing to cancel hope and uh, <laughs> you know they can't I, I don't know who they think buys the groceries I think they think there's 20 little you know devil minions running around buying groceries for you well there should be Sally <laughs> when, they see you, when they see you in a site like that they, they, they go crazy sometimes so well let's talk that's a little kind bit of a funny Let's talk a little bit about your life now. You live on a farm. I do. It's not a working farm any longer. We do have 
chickens and we barter locally the eggs because they lay more than we can possibly use. Um, we did have uh, cows and livestock, but you've got to milk those suckers twice a day. <laughs> and no, nobody wanted to run home and do that. We have uh, horses, but they're just uh, riding horses, and we can't bear to you know, get rid of them. They've been part of the farm for 20-some-odd years. So that, and uh, we're in the now... Uh, planting a, a more limited garden um, than we have had in, in prior years. Uh, you know, it takes very little land to um, raise uh, a lot of vegetables. Anyone who's tried it gets very surprised by the output. It's more than one family can eat. Wow. So that's what's happening here in the spring. On the farm, I'm looking out the window at it. It's a beautiful day. Sally, have beautiful. you ever compared farm notes with Oprah? Because she's got a vegetable farm too. Does she? I didn't know that. Where is it? Oh, I don't know. I oh, haven't. Oh, her been there. giant estate. Who knows where that is? Yeah, she hasn't invited me I over know. yet. <laughs> no, she's not somebody I've ever talked to, except on the air. I've never talked to her privately. No, that's not true. Once, uh, about two, 30 years ago, I guess, I was on, uh, on a bike in the gym at the peninsula, and I looked over, and she was on the other bike. Oh. But aside from that one, I've never talked to her privately. Have you talked to RuPaul privately? You mentioned RuPaul's Drag Race. No, never talk to him privately. All right, but you've talked to Jinx Monsoon. Is she your favorite drag queen from the show? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. No comparison. I don't yes. know how you can pick a favorite off that show. There, Every season, there's just so many great oh, no, no, drag no, queens. No, 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 no. No, Monsoon is so unbelievably talented. I mean, it's oozing out of every pore. It's just, have you ever seen her one-woman show? Not yet. Well, I've seen, I, I love going to one-woman shows. Elaine Stritch is probably the one, the best that ever was. But uh, Monsoon is equally as good. Chad Michaels isn't bad either, the share impersonator. He's coming to Ottawa in June. Is he the one doing share in Broadway? Yes. He's the he's the only share approved share impersonator out there. But you know there's a Broadway show called Share. Oh yes, I want to see it. And uh I have no idea who's playing her on Broadway. Me neither. It might be it might be Not, Chad. I don't know. We'll ask him. Yeah, uh she is uh, now Share is again, I, I I can't say anything, but the most of she is a great person. That person I've talked to off the air. She seems so cool. She was just in Ottawa last week. I went to her concert, and she's so down to earth, even after all the success and, and everything she's been through. She seems so real. She is real, and she is the best, the absolute best. I think one of her, her, well, have, her famous line... Sorry, her famous line that's been going around that she has at her concert is she goes, I'm, how old is she, 74? 73. 73. She goes, I'm 73 years old. Where's your grandma right now? And that's kind of her. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. Don't you love that? Oh, gosh, that's so good. <laughs> so, so. Anyhow. You mentioned that you do, uh, that you do cycling and all this stuff to stay really active. Um, what else do you do? I think we just want to know uh, what, what Sally Jesse do? Raphael does on her spare time these days. Oh, well, it's all spare time. <laughs> like I said, uh, <laughs> somebody, you know, you have to be, um, when I was fired by NBC, they, uh, my agent, who uh, turned out to be, a, like they say, agents only get jobs for people who have jobs. 
Uh, uh, my agent sent me a bowl, and he had it engraved, the best is yet to come. Well, that's bull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Bull. I mean, if this is the best that's yet to come, then we're in real trouble. But uh, at first, what you do when the show ends is you go out and look for another show. As I said, you make, you go, I went to L.A., I went here, I went there, and um, nothing. People would see me because they were just curious about what I was like in person. But they never really did anything to uh, help or, or offer a job. It's so, tough, eh? Um, it's like when you're down, no one wants to help you. Absolutely. No one wants to do a thing for you. So that's part of the thing that people have to know, that when you're doing something, enjoy it tremendously because it might be, you know, the last chance or the last thing that, uh, that you get. Uh, but that's not a bad thing. Because then you go and you find um, other things. Uh, what do I do with my time besides being on the farm? Um, this is not terribly pleasant. I, I apologize, but I have no other way of answering that question without saying this. <laughs> um, I'm not in a particularly good time in my life. My husband, I've been married 59 years to one of the funniest great guys who produced most of my shows. And he has uh, medium to advanced Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Oh. So my time is really uh, 24-7. I'm the caretaker. So my time is 24-7 devoted to him. I know that um, struggle, Sally. My grandmother is uh, suffering through medium to advanced Alzheimer's as well, and it takes a toll on the whole family. It's not easy. Oh, yes. Everybody. Exactly. Everybody. It isn't easy. However, I'm sure with your grandmother and with my husband, Carl, there are some very funny, funny things that oh, yeah. happen. Um, and you just have to, since my husband was a funny man anyhow, um, you just have to uh, laugh and make use of the, the, the good time for whatever he can remember or do on a given day. For example, yesterday, uh, somewhere, he invited somebody to dinner at our house. <gasps> now, it got to be 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I probably asked him a hundred times, who is coming to dinner? What time are they coming? Do they eat? Are they vegetarians? Uh, you know. Yeah. And of course, I never got an answer. And so I sat there and waited, and um, nobody showed up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, you so ate well that happened? night. Yeah, you had plenty of food, I'm That's sure. Exactly. Uh, but not only but the table looked beautiful. You know? <laughs> With farm fresh so ingredients. That's, that's part of the, 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 the funny and not so. And then my husband is um, only about three inches taller than me. So I came down to breakfast this morning thinking, okay, the only thing I have to do is this podcast. And there's Carl sitting, having breakfast in my sweater. My black cashmere <laughs> sweater. What color was it? And not only is he having breakfast, he's dribbling eggs. Oh, no. my black cashmere sweater. Black <laughs> cashmere. <laughs> right. And, I, and it was my best sweater. And I said, okay. I guess we can buy another one. Right. I'm so... I don't know why he didn't notice that it had frills on the wrist. But, uh, Maybe he liked it. He might have He might have really enjoyed it. He felt pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sally, it's an important uh, message, too, for everybody to be patient with Alzheimer's uh, patients because it's very easy to get frustrated, right, and angry about something like that, and, and it's glad that you can laugh at it. 
Well, the hard thing is the people who don't know. Yeah. In other words, you can't walk around with your husband with a sign that says, I have Parkinson's Alzheimer's. Right. So uh, a waiter, for example, at a restaurant will go to Carl and they'll say, and what would you like to have? And part of the problem is they can't make up their mind. He can't, um, you know, he. it's all too overwhelming, a big menu. But the waiter becomes very impatient and says, you know, when you guys have decided, I'll come back. And uh, that's the hard thing on, on the family and on him, of yeah. course. Well, he's lucky to have you, that's for sure. Oh, well, we have still a great deal of fun together. And Good. Boy, it sure makes you appreciate the, uh, uh, every, you know, Carpe Diem. Yes, yeah. embrace the moment. Um, now, a lot, it, you st- still sound so business-minded, though. You're talking about new shows, you want to create pilots, but a lot has changed since your show when it comes to oh, yeah. what's, no, what's on TV. No, but if you had no, the opportunity to create your own show right now, what would you do? Out of uh, all your I experience. Think, uh, I, I guess, well, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to think about that because it just isn't going to happen. Well, she also and, tried with uh, Sally Jesse Rides. I still think Sally Jesse Rides should get picked up. <laughs> You know, we're here, and Jason and Patrick are there, and they they produced it. They could do whatever they wanted to do. Listen, if um, Betty White can get off her all... rockers off the ground, then there's no reason that <laughs> Sally Jesse can't ride. <laughs> Come You're on. very sweet. You really, really are. Um, no, but you can be a business person. One of the things I do and have been doing since 1993 is uh, tape. And uh, my mother was a professional artist uh, hanging in, well, she's in the Frick, she's in the Boston Museum. She wow. was really, and I I could never, ever uh, draw the broadside of a barn, as they say. And then about 15 years after she passed, I was uh, in Cannes and I was near I used to live in the south of France. Carl and I lived there for 23 years. And um, we I saw an art store. I went in. I bought a charcoal pencil, a pad. And lo and behold, I was able to draw. Oh. Absolutely out of nowhere. So, you know, you never know. So I do that. So you I discovered a new I talent know. that you didn't know you had. Exactly. So that is something that's great, great and wonderful and, and very engaging. And I enjoy doing it a tremendous amount. Uh, have you ever thought of maybe making a line of, of glasses frames? <gasps> you, could, you, could, you could combine your artistry now in with your trademark. You know, we, we tried that. And no one wanted to do or make the glasses. We what? really did try. Well, glasses oh, are trendy oh, now. Somebody. I know, <laughs> I know, but uh, it didn't work out. I don't know. Maybe I didn't have the correct connections or something. But I have never, only once in my life have I ever done a commercial. And that was a commercial where I was, gosh, what the heck is his name? Rudy Tootie Booty Cootie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of his name. That's a good name. I'm going to. Uh, Anyhow, we did one commercial, and it won the award for Best Commercial of the Year, and I was never asked to do another commercial. Uh, But I don't like doing things like that. I don't think... Funny, it must be very old-fashioned, but... Whenever I see somebody like Tom Selleck now doing a commercial for uh, you can mortgage your house and ruin the rest of your life, (laughs) he doesn't say that. But whenever 
I see something like that, I wonder why the hell would they sell out like that? So, well, maybe their uh, shows aren't getting not, picked up. I mean, it's tough out yeah, here. No, Tom Selleck has got everything going, doesn't he? He's in Blue Blood. And, yes. Um, Money makes people do funny things, Sally. I think money makes people do things that they never in their right mind would do if it wasn't for that paycheck. Do you think Tom Selleck needs the money? No, I guess not Tom Selleck. No, but the wealthy always want more. They always want more. It's never enough. I mean, I thought the same thing when I saw Jamie Lee Curtis shoveling that yogurt into her face. (laughs) And I thought, Jamie Lee, you don't need this. And what about Alex Trebek? For what the? Hell, Alex Trebek, man. he's from our city yeah. of Ottawa. That is correct, and he's also selling mortgages, you know. <laughs> um, he's selling two things, I think, mortgages and something else. What the hell? What's wrong with him? <laughs> so, I don't know. So, no, no mortgage? I or, or... Did it, but I, I, I wouldn't do it. No I, cash and, loan commercials you know, for Sally J. You just don't need that much money. You just don't. So, Sally, did you uh, set out wanting to be a talk show host? Because I know you started in radio much like we did, right? I was uh, six years old, NBC Radio. We had a show called The Quiz Kids. And uh, that would be 1941, believe it or not. And Dick Van Patten and his wife were two of the other quiz kids. I never knew that till I had interviewed him um, 50 years later. And he said, why do you look familiar? (laughs) We were both quiz kids at six. So um, it was a matter of, uh, I had a show business mom, and that is a good thing. The original momager. Well, that's the best thing. You know, if you didn't have a show business mom who made you take speech lessons or learn to tap dance or whatever show business moms do or did in those days, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't I wouldn't be where I was. I wouldn't have had the wonderful career that that I had. So Poor show business moms. It's not all gypsy, if you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you see that more and more now, but sometimes these stage moms take a whole level, whole another level of crazy. You know, you've got stage moms probably much like your mom who was there to support you as well as make sure you got the skills that you needed to succeed in show business. But then you have these other ones that are all kinds of crazy that will, you yeah, know. Yeah, but those are the ones. They're the ones that get the publicity. But I think there are many more good... You know, I once interviewed um, the head violinist for the New York Philharmonic, and his father came with him to the interview. This was when I was doing um, AM Miami, or Good Morning Miami. And I asked him, does your father go on all your interviews? And he said, yes. Because when I was a kid, uh, he made me practice the violin. And I wanted to go out and play baseball. And he said, you know, I owe that guy. I owe him a lot. Well, there are a lot more of those kinds of parents who uh, didn't force their kids to do things, but gently found out what was best about the kids. Yeah. And then help them to achieve that. Yeah, you got to go with what works, find their strength, right? And sometimes kids need just a little bit more push. <laughs> you know, I remember I was an athlete, and growing up, my parents had to push me a couple times. <laughs> exactly. Every child has a unique selling proposition, something that they either love or do better than anybody else. And it's a matter of finding that and helping your kid to uh, to uh, do what they want to do in life. 
important for people too when some adults grow up and they still don't know what that natural selling or whatever that phrase was you just used was brilliant natural sellable property or whatever uh it's unique a, selling proposition proposition that's the word well i always knew that that's what i wanted to do so um a little known fact i've uh acted in about 52 movies under other names. Oh, wow. Uh, wearing, wearing makeup. It was always a hobby of mine, and um, it kept me busy a lot. Uh, it's not in my discography, or most of them are not, but it was something that was great fun to do. In fact... Uh, I'm still doing it, but I never tell anybody. Oh, Sally, you tease. Okay. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> that's the fun. Well, can you that, give us at least one fun. of your other sti- your other porn names? Give us a st- <laughs> give us one of your other secret pseudonyms. Nope. Oh, nope. Sally. Yeah. No, no, we'll never, never tell. The only time I almost got caught was New Jersey gave me a award for a uh, film, the Film Persons Award about two years ago. Uh, and I said, how the hell did they figure that one out? Hey, the but internet. So. We can find everything these days, no, Sally. It's not, it's, no, it's not on the internet. Oh. That's the best. If you change your name and you change your look, that even the internet can't doesn't know it all. In fact, the internet knows an awful lot of things that aren't true. Oh, well, that's for sure. But I'm just curious, why if uh, why would you want to use a stage name for these movies? Why wouldn't you proudly say, "I'm Sally Jesse Raphael and I'm in this movie"? Or is it because they were like bad TV movies or what? No, no, some of them were, but no, some of them were great. Um, why would you do it? Uh, yeah, I'm just curious, because I'd be like, more publicity is better, I, I right? No, it's just it's just a hobby. It's just a fun thing to do. Okay. When I meet a movie producer, I tell him that this is what I do, and then he said, oh, well, we have a bus driver uh, who's Italian. Do uh, you think you can do, it's a, a five lines, do you think you can do that? And I go, of course, no problem. It's almost like Sally's um, a real world Where's Waldo. You can watch these indie films out there, and you never know, she might pop up driving a bus. And makeup, and you won't even and, recognize oh, her. Now people, people do recognize, and, and they call at three in the morning. <laughs> and some of the films I do are in other languages. So oh. they say, Sally, I'm watching, they say to me in Spanish, I'm watching uh, this movie. Is that you? Uh, 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 I'm sleeping. Yes, <laughs> but, I don't know what you you're know. talking about. Uh, that's it's awesome. Fun. It's fun. That is fun. And well, when somebody guesses a movie, there's no reason to, to lie about it. But you don't want to. You you don't want to tell them all the other movies under all the other names. The only trouble is the union, you know. Um, now, it's been a while since your show was on the air. I mean, it's been a long time, and a lot has changed. Uh, do you think your show could could work today? Same sort of guests, same, you know? Yeah, the show that we did in the beginning, the show that we did uh, where we were doing serious topics, women's health issues, ecology. Uh, Health and ecology are still uppermost in most people's minds uh, in our country. And sure, serious conversation about that would definitely work. Absolutely. Uh, Most television today is just unwatchable. Uh, what they call reality has no more reality. Uh, you know, it just isn't real. 
And bef- um, before we talk about reality, though, you're right. There's no real show like yours on TV right now. The closest thing we have is Dr. Phil. And I can't understand why talk shows like yours went the way of the dinosaur. I love them. I know. I had no idea it was the decision. Uh, well, first of all, I was sold out uh, by two or three of the producers on the show. Uh I wanted to do things that were interesting and serious, and the company owned Maury and mm. Jerry, and they wanted uh, that kind of uh, who's your baby daddy? Trashy, mama. the you trashy know, topics. Yeah, but, but you know what, so, Sally, you uh, used to have a variety of topics, not just baby daddy, but like I was ugly in high school. Look at me now, and I have a secret to tell my wife. Eventually, they all started to go to the baby daddy stuff, and it lost the uh, variety and excitement well, that your show all the had. Same, yeah. yeah, 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 it did. But the director, the producers, who wanted to keep their jobs would tell the company, oh, we'll make her do these trashy shows. And uh, maybe I'd do a few, and then I'd go back to insisting it was a, that we were exploiting people, because that's what that kind of television is. It's exploitation of people who aren't as educated or who aren't, who aren't like you. So presumably you're supposed to laugh at them. And I find that disgusting. Yeah, and that was one thing I always loved about your show and you as a host was that you genuinely cared about your guests. You genuinely cared about their well-being and about giving them the help that they needed. And you always seemed so genuine. Well, I got you fooled. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I knew we'd get along with her just fine. You know, I do keep in touch with quite a few of the guests. And uh, I don't know if Oprah does it. I don't know if anybody else does it. But I do. And, uh, of course, we had a moment in their lives in common. And um, it's proven to be... I mean, I've gotten their children's children's baby pictures, if you can imagine such a thing. Oh, that's great. That's, I mean, it's so many generations, right? That's right. It's kind of nice, as a matter of fact. Well, it's very generous of you I, uh, to stay in touch with some of them because it was, you're right, a life-changing moment for them, for sure. And I'm sure it means a lot that right. you still reach out. The hard thing is that a lot of people want to know if I can um, give them a copy of the show that they were on. And uh, unlike Oprah, I was a hired hand. I got a paycheck on Friday. And I didn't own and don't own any part of any of the shows. But they don't know that. So they keep asking, you know, my father has passed on. and My mother said he was on your show. Can you please send me a copy of the show? And... uh, at the beginning, I used to ask NBC, is there any way we can get just a, a little cut of any of those shows? But they want so much money. Ugh. They want a tremendous amount of money. And these people don't have that kind of money. Well, and they're know. not looking to so, profit off of the footage. They just want it as a memory, as a keepsake. Of course, but they don't. they won't do it. I gave them an idea about twice. I said, look, while I'm still lucid, why don't you let me bring back some of these guests, show the old show, and let me find out what happened to the bad girls who went to boot camp. Or yes. Let's find out where they are today. And they said, that is the stupidest idea they have ever heard. What? Everybody loves those updates. Oh, my gosh. They absolutely refuse. Now, they have sold the show to, uh, I think it's called Newsy. Um, I don't know much about it. I think it may be a European English or something channel. They sold about 12 of the shows that they keep rerunning. I don't, uh, I don't get any money out of it. As I said, I didn't own any part of it. But, um, well, that's the trouble with they, the internet they, they, now, too. Is a, 
a lot of them are online. Uh, I know that when you agreed to do this podcast, Jenna and I stayed up until the wee hours of the morning watching old Sally episodes because we were so excited. <laughs> so there's a lot of them that are on YouTube. So maybe that that guest could find her dad somewhere. But you know, Sally, I think your idea of you coming back and hosting a reunion show, especially with some of the most memorable guests on your on your program, and that was the guest itself. But I, I remember the, the boot camp directors that would come in, and oh, I yeah. would love to see what those gentlemen look like these days. <laughs> I'd love to see what happened. I'd love to see what happened to these people, but NBC Universal wouldn't love to see what happened to these people. So there's nothing I can do. I gave up. Uh, his name is Fitzgerald, vice president of programming, or Linda Pinnell, who was once one of our producers. She turned it down. He turned it down. I like that uh, you're dropping names, know. Sally. Keep dropping those names. Mm-hmm. Call them out. Oh. <laughs> I do. I call everybody. What? <laughs> um, I'm just curious because Jenna and I were, we had our show canceled. It wasn't as big as yours, a very similar way. They don't give you any explanation, no excuse. Thanks for coming out. Bye. Did NBC give you a reason or was it ratings or what was it? No. Oh, you mean when they fired me? Yeah. Oh, when they fired me. They said that the show had slipped uh, in ratings, and they were afraid that it was going to slip some more. Believe it or not, it was at a 4.8 that they <laughs> that they were worried about. And that's pretty Today, good for people that don't understand the rating points. What's the highest you can have? Well, you could have uh, everybody in the United States, I guess, 300 and... Well, I guess I'm wondering, what is a 4.8? What does that mean? Percent. Oh, percent. The 4.8 4. million people. Wow, 4.8 4. million. That's awesome. Now, anybody daytime would kill for that number. Yeah. But uh, that's them, and they wanted to go in the Maury and Jerry direction. And as I said, I, I could look myself in the mirror and do that kind of programming. You know, so, I just, uh, I'm processing the 4.8. It's crazy because I just read Robin Williams' uh, biography and Mork and Mindy, when it was hitting 2 million people, it was considered like the biggest show in the United States. And I know that was a little before you your time, it. but still, like if 2 million is the biggest show in the country and 4.8, they're saying is a slip, can you, come on now. Could you imagine? Well, a little bit of trivia. The, uh, probably the biggest rating that any show has ever gotten was Amos and Andy and I think it was the trial I don't know if it was the trial of Amos or of Andy it was uh, or maybe Ruby Begonia they every single uh, town in America had radios turned up at gas stations and on street corners and in, in parks, and something like three-quarters of the entire population of America listened to Amos and Andy on that particular night. And I think that's probably uh, the highest-rated show there ever was. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, it's like people saying, who made the most money in television? And, well, who do you think made the most who had a show? Rosie Oprah. O'Donnell. <laughs> Oprah? Nope. Alan? Not Oprah, not Rosie O'Donnell. Sally Jesse. One of, nope. Nowhere near. It's not Jenny Jones. Oh, no. It might have been way back, like, uh... No, no, not Johnny way Carson? Back. Nope. She said woman. Oh, woman. I have no Joan idea. Joan Rivers? <gasps> no, I didn't say woman. Oh. I said who made, who, who made uh, until, well, still, still makes. Carson. The then. most money. Not Carson? No. I have no what? idea. Don Francisco. Sabado Gigante. He has a show on every Spanish station in the entire oh. world called Giant Saturday. His name is Don Francisco. He's, uh, I think, Chilean. And um, 
I may be wrong. I do think he's Chilean. And he has always been the highest paid person on television. Good for him. Or not. Take that, Oprah. (laughs) Yeah. And Rosie O'Donnell. He could buy and (laughs) sell Oprah. Wow. Wow. That's how good he is. Now, before we let you go here, I think everyone wants to know. Um, everyone here wants to know, too. I had a lot of people write in when we heard that they heard we were interviewing you. And one of the things is they want to know what was the most memorable part of your show. And that could have been on the screen or behind. You know, for us, it was for me, it was always reaching out to, to people saying that we helped change their lives or, you know, help them be happier. But what was the most memorable part of you hosting your show? Wow. Uh, probably, uh, well, it certainly isn't winning an award. I, I got two Emmys. I, I had one of the statues. I lost the other somewhere what? in the move. But yeah, I never found it. But I always think that all of those things are, um, are, are fixed. All the, uh, award shows are fixed and if we had a lot of time i could explain how it was done um oh well we got time for that if you'd like to give us a little summary for sure i'm interested in that because i would think winning an emmy sally it it must validate you more than anything like wow now i finally made it like that's that's the top of the tv heat no no No, it doesn't mean the same thing no okay tell Uh, us why okay when it's the person who gets the most votes for that segment of the uh, industry. Uh, Let's see. Let's say it's a talk show. Let's say uh, Oprah has uh, 300 um, employees. Let's say I had 200 employees. I'm making these figures up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wouldn't 300 people vote for their own show and 200 vote for their own show? I see what you're saying. Oh, I get it now. It's nepotism. So who (laughs) sort of who would win? The people that voted for their own show. Of course, and wouldn't there wouldn't the person who had wouldn't the show that had the most employees win? Of course. Hmm. Does it work that way for like Grammys and Academy Awards too? To a different extent, and I said it's too boring to go into, but uh, yeah, it works. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's because everything's usually voted up from a board, right? And if the board is filled with people that worked for X show or X show or whatever movie or are friends, yes. then they're getting or the vote. Best costume. Yeah, like in the in the in the Academy Awards, makeup is voted by other people who are makeup artists. Yeah, it's kind right? of silly when you look at it that way. The the so unfortunate thing. A, is that regular people don't know that, right? So it looks wonderful, and they count on that. Well, no one's going to tell you that because these stations make money off these award shows. Well, we're telling them now, Sally. We're telling them now. <laughs> Sally, have you ever had a stalker? Well, I'm not, I'm not a cynic. It's just that... No, you're telling the truth. Things, yeah, there are things that are stupid. People ought to know they're stupid. <laughs> Have you ever had a stalker? You know, it's like that. What is that Survivor? I was watching when we first went on the air, Survivor. Yeah. Now, you belong to a union. The union has got to provide the people who are on a show with uh, a, a, a setup for food, and uh, you have to work just so many hours, you know, it's that's the way the union is. So there's somebody out in the middle of the jungle on television saying, I'm starving. I've got to learn to fish. I have no food. 
And there's the cameraman standing in front of her eating a hot dog <laughs> or a hamburger that he just got off the, the food wagon. I mean, you know, come on. Yeah, yeah. Look behind the curtain a little bit, huh? Um, I'm determined to get my answer about the stalker. Have you ever had a stalker, Sally? Yeah, I had a stalker. Um, I don't know what became of the stalker. Uh Uh, Uh Uh-oh. It was when I was somebody. You see, they never tell the celebrity about the stalker. Oh, so you had your people intervene. Yeah. No, I didn't know the person was stalking me. It's the... uh, it's the company that said this person is stalking Sally. And I was traveling, I think I was in San Francisco, and uh, I was staying in a very nice suite, and I opened the door, and about four doors opened at the same time. <gasps> and I said to myself, aha, those, those four people don't decide to leave their room at the same time. Those, those have got to be protection. So um, that's all I knew about the stalker. So, I knew nothing else to tell the person anything. Wow. I'm surprised they didn't even tell you you were under that much security. Like you'd think, I guess they didn't want to scare you, right? That's correct. They didn't, while I was working, they didn't want to scare me. Correct. Hmm. But I guess everybody has had something like that. Well, even Jenna had one here on the on the radio in Ottawa. Yes, I did. I had a man follow me home twice. Scary stuff. It really? Was, yes. That would be a great what topic for a do? talk show. Stalkers, because they are scary. What did you do, Jenna? What did I do? What did you do, Jenna? I, I told my boss, and then I had to call the police, and he was he was breaking into my car, too, and eventually it just stopped. Huh. I know. I know. Hey. I told her I wouldn't do it again, but, you know... <laughs> And I haven't. And I haven't. <laughs> oh, God. Dear me, dear me, dear me. Well, you've been fun. You know, Jason said these people are can be very edgy. So I said to Jason, Jason, when I get off the air with them, I'll ask them to do something edgy. All right. So I'm going to ask you, the two of you, do something edgy. All right, we're ready. Okay. What are you going to do? What are we going to do? Oh. <laughs> we have to come up with something edgy. Well, what are the topics we were going to, because we had a couple to- topics to talk no, about. No, not me. And, and one of them was um, this new thing about um, men, especially men, sending unsolicited pictures of their genitalia. Right. And uh, did that ever happen yeah, to you no. back in the day? Do did you they? Know, do you know any woman in the world? Who would be turned on by a picture of a penis? No, Sally. Thank you for saying that. Well, if you knew who it was attached to, maybe. It's just not no, an attractive part of the body. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't, guys, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> It's it just, really you know, it's not an attractive part of the body. Am I right, Sally? Like, it's, it's, there, it's just. Absolutely. Ugly as sin. <laughs> I disagree with you, women. I'll be over here with my own opinion then. Sally, uh, one thing, I, oh, by the way, the late, great Joan Rivers is one of my favorite people and celebrities in the whole world. Did you ever meet her? Oh, I knew her quite well, yes. Okay, well, the friend. reason I bring her up is because she liked to talk about sex, and one thing she'd always say is that it does not go away just because you get older, and she had a very active dating life up until the very end, and she hated when people would be like, oh, yeah, it's it's dried up down there because she'd joke about that in her act, but, uh, yeah, no, she was a big advocate for sex over 70. Do you uh, subscribe to that? I think whatever you want works. Whatever works for you works. That's fat. Just don't you send know, but, dick pics. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Joan was again somebody who was, she was very interesting in that she, at least I must have gone to dinner with her, who oh, I would say about 10 times, not a lot, but 10 times, and she didn't talk. 
What do you mean she wouldn't she talk? Talking. She didn't, didn't talk. She was quite quiet and and, not, and didn't didn't tell jokes and didn't talk. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I know she was very like business minded when she wasn't working, so uh, maybe she didn't. Hey, oh my God! Sorry, so sorry, Sally. <laughs> we had one of the dogs peeing That's on Jenna's right. purse here. Oh, jo- Jesse has two. That do, you, do you like dogs, Sally? Oh, Jesse has mine pee all over the damn house. Jesse so. has two <laughs> Chihuahuas, and uh, so far, what the one peed on my rug at my house, and then just peed on my purse. So I don't yeah, know if thanks. chihuahuas are real dogs. What kind of dogs do you have, Sally? I have often pincers. Oh! Small dogs cannot be trained. <laughs> no, they really can't. <laughs> this is the last time they're coming are to recording. Are those like short men, sure. too? Short men, they can't be trained either. Oh, I think short men are very sexy. Oh. Well, yeah, and then sometimes because they're short, their penises look even bigger. <laughs> no. Don't look good to women. All right, that's enough, Jen. All right. Thank you so much again for keeping us so entertained today and all those years. We really appreciate you. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye. Sally. Bad boy. Why are you peeing on my bed? I had that phone on Do Not Disturb. How does call waiting come through on Do Not Disturb? I don't understand. It's okay. It'll easier be able to take away from. Yeah, guys, for future, whenever there's a delay on the phone like that, just let it happen. I can close that and happily will close that in editing. That's super, super simple. I just never know. It's like if I start talking and then I hear her still going, it's like, oh, do I stop? Or do you just power through? I think if it's Sally Jesse Raphael, you stop. You stop. It's all right. We did a couple times, but yeah, I'm curious to hear how that sounds. It'll sound amazing by the time I'm done editing it. You won't know. And by the way, the we levels, got really the good levels stuff. in your headphones sound, for her sound really, really low because she's not in the room. Yeah. So you don't have that in. Get outside. Showing off with the cat. I think we got a really good start. He was calling because the show was on the air with Sydney the other day. Oh no. What show? You know what they stopped doing when you kept calling and there was a delay and it's like doing these quick screens?
think that's society's moral norm, because what does the man what does the man do? Exactly, it's exactly it's really cool show. No, it's exactly because Amy Wolfe's character is never gonna change her character. Oh, that's what I'm Sure, you're not the only one. Zoe thinks someone took his t-shirt. Cuz he had it on his chair and he went pee and came back cuz it was gone. Really? But, I mean, was it a magic t-shirt or? It was like this. It said "I uh" cuz his name was "Ida Road of Murder." [laughs] [laughs] But he's like, "Don't say anything cuz they'll think I didn't care and I just left it in the dishwasher." [laughs] 